began working at Project Art about three years ago. Actually, my work anniversary was this week. I'm going into my fourth year. And I had done nonprofit work before that uh, was youth-centered and artistic. However, it didn't match up with my background, which was visual arts. I had done some performance art, theater troupe work, prevention-based um, activities, and after-school models. So I was very familiar with it. And what I love about Project Art is it really is seeking to nurture and foster just pure creative joy without the sense of competition and, you know, kids needing to achieve in this brilliant kind of like we're creating Picassos or Renoirs, you know, it's really not about that. It's it's about the the way that art is a vehicle to, you know, shape lives and and create, you know, more critical thinking skills. It's there's studies based on this that art can really help kids uh, with academic achievements, like you name it, it, helps them get into college, it improves attendance rates. And I just truly believe that art has a lot of power and a lot of capability if it's taught with love and it's taught with empathy and it's taught in a sense that it's not focusing on the value on the final product and more of the process keeps me going is the kids um the families and the artists um it's it's amazing you know to just be toiling and and working so hard it's not really a glamorous job sometimes and then you get to see the final results and you get to sit on on the class and, and see these kids just truly enjoying being there and the feedback that we get from parents and, and the ways that they see their kids grow and evolve, you know, just by way of taking these classes, it really makes it all worth it. And the second part of our program is facilitating artists residencies. So we're also you know, providing professional development and training and serving as a resource for local artists in the cities that we serve. Um, and artists need help. I mean, <laughs> artists are always juggling a million things, just trying to get by, uh, trying to make it. It's a really tough industry. And it's amazing to, you know, sometimes introduce this uh, this stream of income for artists, you know, they can continue with their practice and have this supplemental stream of income where they're teaching kids on the side. Project Art started in 2011 um, in just a community center in Harlem with 10 kids, and it was very grassroots. Our founders named Darish Alphonse. Uh, we had hired a couple of artists to teach, and soon we grew into our nonprofit 501c3 certified model, where we partner with public libraries from coast to coast to provide free after-school visual arts in-depth education. Um, the need stems from the creativity crisis that's plaguing the nation. Um, most public schools, especially if they are in areas with high poverty rates, low standardized test scores, the arts are the first to go. And it's not just visual arts, it's music, it's theater, it's all of it. They're cut from educational programming and what's replaced is standardized test prep. We really believe that the arts not only can enhance student standardized test scores and create fully holistic beings in this world, um, you know, cutting them is a shame and we're, we're really filling this opportunity gap that is presented to youth, um, you know, in the ages that we serve, four to 18. And it's not just, I think, the fact that these classes get cut often, it's also the teacher shortage, which is a really big issue in our country right now. Um, teachers don't have an easy job. They're quitting left and right. And, you know, it's hard to find academic instructors, let alone art instructors who are qualified to give, you know, in-depth arts education. So we're filling an opportunity gap on, on multiple levels in that sense. A story that really embodies what we do is a student who was attending one of our classes in Miami at Kendall Branch. And I had been speaking with his mom 
um, a little bit back and forth about the fact that he wanted to uh, apply for magnet programs and how grateful she was that he had had access to our program since he was four years old. And now as he was heading into high school, he actually had the skills and he had the mentorship and he had the portfolio to apply and to explore this opportunity. And the reason why he didn't have arts education at his school is because he was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and so they removed him from his arts class and they placed him in another class for special needs children just to kind of, I mean, whatever it is they do, help them focus or, you know, probably some standardized test training to make sure that they're excelling in academics. Um, but then, yeah, arts get cut, which is really unfortunate. So it's stories like these that really remind us that, you know, what we're doing does serve a purpose. And some of these kids wouldn't have had this opportunity otherwise. The biggest obstacle that Project Art has faced is one that I think many organizations have faced, and it was the way that pan the pandemic hit us in 2020. Um, funding was largely at play. A lot of foundations shifted focus and they, you know, rightfully so were trying to, um, you know, fund emergency, uh, crisis and, and, um, aspects of survival, such as food shortages and housing and you name it. So we struggled a while financially, um, and we're starting to bounce back. Uh, we've had some major donations in the past year, and we're beginning to expand our footprint again. Um, we had been probably triple the size of what we were in 2020, uh, pre-pandemic, and we're inching our way closer and closer to that. My background is in visual arts. I attended a magnet program in high school called New World School of the Arts in Miami. It was very intensive, um, intimidating, exhilarating, and it completely shaped the way that I think. I don't think that I would be the person that I am today had I not had that experience. I continued on with my arts education background when I was at Florida State University. I double majored in studio art and art history. So needless to say, I am just an avid supporter and life, lifelong lover of the arts. And what I love personally about being involved with the program, such as Project Art, is that I get to curate and uh, craft experiences and creative journeys for kids that are little tweaks to the one that I had as, as a child. And times are really different now. And I love having the opportunity to create safer spaces um, that are just full of empathy and joy. I picked After School HQ as the registration and communication resource for our nationwide program because we had previously had a development team that had created our uh, this resource for us and it crashed and we lost all of our student data. Uh, we did not have a way to register students and we needed a very quick solution to, <laughs> because our program starts every year without fail at the same time. We had explored different options such as Salesforce. Um, they have a nonprofit packet, which seems like maybe it could have fit, but would have been a massive training experience for our staff. I mean, it's it the back end is pretty dense and um, not user friendly, um, especially for people who are nonprofit professionals, not tech professionals. <laughs> um, so when After School HQ uh, fell into our laps, essentially, someone had forwarded it on to us and said, I think this is in good alignment with your needs. Um, we quickly discovered that it had everything that we needed already built into it. So it was a very easy decision. Um, it was also a more cost efficient decision for us in managing this service. Um, as a nonprofit, our, our budget is very limited and you know we don't have room for an IT team or a marketing team or any of that. So it's really great to have you know an external partner who can facilitate this and make updates when needed. That's been one of the most absolutely 
most helpful and resourceful aspect of working with AHQ is that we come to them and we say, hey, we need this. And lo and behold, a month later, there it is. They've updated that feature for us. So not only is it built in with everything that it needs, but it's also flexible and they're open to, to change and suggestions. And we work together with a true sense of partnership, really. Whenever I touch base with after school HQ employees, staff members, uh, I feel like I'm working with people in house. Uh, we've developed a, a solid relationship over the past year. And, you know, it's very, in a sense, uh, you know, friendly. I wouldn't say informal, but it's, it's friendly. Uh, we're on first name basis, you know, basis. I'm going to say that again. I'm on first name basis with a lot of the people who work there. Um, they will drop everything to hop on a call with me. They resolve issues in a timely fashion and they prioritize us. So we feel very taken care of and um, we feel like comfortable um, as far as reaching out with what our, whatever our needs are, which is great. Before After School HQ, um, we we used our registration platform in a very similar way, I would say. Um, it is occasionally a day-to-day -day experience as far as like our involvement with After School HQ. Definitely around registration time, we are on AHQ every day. We are checking our numbers. We're watching these registrations roll through. On a weekly basis is more what it looks like over the course of the program cycle. Um, we use it for our communication with families, um, which is a really nifty feature. It also sends them a text message, which I am a huge fan of because there are many parents who don't check their emails. <laughs> so having that text feature is great. We make It ensures that we can communicate with our families. It is also something that we use quarterly to um, download and crunch our attendance numbers. So After School HQ has a resource uh, called Grafana, which is an add-on to AHQ, and it really allows us to filter through all of our classes. We have over 50 classes nationwide, so we really need some specific details sometimes. So. Yeah, we use it for probably three or four different things, registration, attendance, communication with family, and wrapping up numbers quarterly. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been extremely helpful. And um, as far as our involvement with our previous developer, some of these, um, you know, we were doing the same things, but it wasn't as uh, user-friendly before, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>